Continuing the design of my motor controller, in this video I'm going to continue wiring up the, the different pins uh, to the microcontroller itself. And um, in the previous video I started uh, mapping out the pins and I got the feeling that kind of um, that this, this package has way too few pins uh, for me to efficiently connect all of the pins uh, to the MCU. Um, so um, uh, one solution that I've been looking at is uh, using 176 pin package instead. Uh, I think that would be uh, probably the optimal solution. Um, but I still uh, can't let, let go of the idea that uh, maybe I can still connect everything to this chip. Um, and maybe um, because in some for some things here like for example the analog inputs i have so many analog inputs or analog signals uh, that i want to measure here uh, that uh, i'm going to need a multiplexer anyway uh, so as long as i can uh, get the most um, critical signals connected directly to the mcu i think everything else could be pretty much fine uh, so I'm going to try to connect uh, all of the critical signals. And if, if I cannot do that, if I uh, run into problems of uh, not having enough pins, then I'll change this, this package to a 176 pin package. Uh, so let's get started. Um, the next on the list. So I've connected the motor control uh, signals uh, for, the, uh, for the two um, inverters here. Uh, and the next thing to do is to connect the analog signals. So I have uh, all of these are analog signals that need to be measured, um, both the potentiometers and the uh, current and voltage sensing here. Uh, now, in the case of potentiometers, I can use a multiplexer because I don't need to um, to sense these signals uh, quickly. Uh, but in the case of uh, current and voltage sensing, I have to be as precise as uh, I can possibly get uh, to uh, to be able to measure uh, these signals uh, during uh, the specific portion of the PWM cycle. Uh, so these signals have to be connected directly to the controller. Um, the, uh, the thing that can make it complicated is that uh, the analog signals are connected to the PA port and so just a few signals are connected to, to the other ports. Uh, and PA port uh, is also uh, quite crowded now because uh, all of these signals uh, had to go on the PA port as well. If I were to use a 176 pin controller, then uh, these signals can be mapped to an extra port called PH port. Um, and then I can free up the, the PA uh, pins for the analog inputs. Uh, but um, I think there are still enough pins and I'm, I'm going to just uh, go over all of the analog signals and see where I can fit them. Uh, so we have a ADC1 channel, uh, let's see, ADC1 in 0, 2. Uh, th the thing about these PA0, 1, and 2 is that uh, they can be connected to uh, any ADC, while the other channels, uh, they can be connected to uh, either ADC1 or ADC2. Um, let's put the, let's see, so let's put the current sensing on channel 3 for the A uh, bridge and uh, the other current sensor. Uh, let's actually move this up. <coughs> and uh, SOB1 can go right here on the next channel. Um, just make this, come on. And uh, SOA2 uh, will then go to ADC, ADC2 uh, in 6 and in 9. Um, it's good to have these um, on two different ADCs because um, two ADCs can work independently. While if I were to put them on the same ADC, I would have to sample them um, in a... Um, I would have to sample them uh, in series. So um, I'll put them on uh, these two pins. And then I have the, the voltage sensing, uh, which will need to go 
to let's see ADC yeah to to some of the like ADC one or two uh, so let's see so ADC channel six is this channel eight yeah okay that's channel eight and nine uh, good so second signal can go to uh, so that that doesn't have ADC ADC yeah so we're we run out of ADC pins there um, so it seems that it seems that I'm already kind of having trouble here uh, so um, ADC in ten. And in eleven. In twelve. Fourteen and fifteen. Uh, I want to put the main supply voltage sensing on um, uh, on a directly connected ADC channel because uh, it uh, the, the processor will have to respond very quickly to the rise in the um, main supply voltage, like when the motor is uh, trying to stop. So this is a critical signal. Uh, so it has to go to a dedicated ADC channel. Um, and then let's see if, well, let's see if there are any other channels that I could use. Maybe I would need to move something uh, from this port that is not critical. For example, the debug UART. Although the debug UART is not connected to any pin that uh, has ADC functionality either, so it's uh, it will do just fine there on PA9 and PA10. Uh, but where do we have? Uh, so it's just the HAL inputs. Uh, on the HAL inputs here, and on the encoder A. And the low side MOSFET A. So um, I need a, I need at least another ADC pin for uh, uh, connecting a multiplexer. And I'm not quite sure where whether there is another pin left here. ADC. ADC3 in 6 can be mapped here. All right. So it looks like we have a few more ADC pins. The day is saved. Okay. Um Uh, I think it's it, it's a good time to um, add a little text here that uh, describes uh, how things are connected. So we have team team one is um, team one would be uh, the motor one. Team two is. Um, Team 2 
I think team two is the um, encoder. Yeah, team two is the encoder. <coughs> Module one ink uh, team three is module one how team four is motor two encoder and team five is motor two how and uh, team eight is uh, motor two ADC one channel one is Why can I not move this? Come on. This is highly annoying. This indeed is very annoying. Okay. ADC one. Um, I'm just gonna map the, the channels here. Let's see. Two, three. Let's see, one, channel five. Let's make three and four the, um, actually I could do like this, just so that I, just so that it's easier to edit. So, motor one, uh, car A, motor one, car B. <coughs> ADC1 channel 6 Let's put voltage sensing there Motor 1 um, ADC2 Okay, uh, this would be the motor two current A and motor two current B. And then there is ABC. OK, 
Okay, um, channel 10 is uh, motor one B, and uh, channel 11 is motor one fault C. I think I'll keep ADC 1 and 2 uh, dedicated to the motors because I have more pins here so I can um, let's see. so I can connect uh, this one to ADC 3 perhaps pin let me just delete this. So, so A1 is already connected here. Yeah. All right. And then there is obviously not enough pins to connect all of the uh, potentiometers directly, I think. So I have um, I have ADC uh, ADC pins um, uh, 14, 15. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, uh, so seven, seven pins left, and I have eight signals. So this is definitely not. Um, this is definitely not going to be enough. Uh, but that's no problem. Uh, I'll add two multiplexers, and I'll have enough uh, signal lines to to also sense uh, currents of of the uh, power supplies. Um, so let me see here. There is an analog multiplexer uh, that is. Um, it's produced by um, I think it's a it's a TI chip it's a variant of uh, this most common multiplexer uh, let's see sort this by price SL74 LV uh, 4051 Let's have a look at the data sheet for this. Uh, this is a bidirectional multiplexer. So it, it works both as a multiplexer and a demultiplexer. Eight channel CMOS analog multiplexer and demultiplexer for two to five volts operation. Analog and digital signals, um, signal gating, chopping, modulation, modulation, um, signal multiplexing uh, for analog to digital, digital to analog conversion systems. Okay.
I think I'll probably go with the cell I see. Um, at least at, at this stage. Let's see. Um, so um, let's see if this one is uh, in the default library. This would be 7041. No. <coughs> no, 4051. 4051. That was as far away from the actual description as one can get from the actual number. Analog multiplexer. Looking good. Uh, we have VDD on 16, uh, 13, 14, 15, 12. Let's see. 13, 14, 15, 12. And 1, 5, 2, 4. 1, 5, Two, four, seven. Great. Inhib inhibition six. Ground seven eight. Um, and uh, eleven ten nine. Uh, the signals for controlling this chip. So um, this is pretty much um, all ready for use. Uh, so th they are actually they're very common. So there is a lot of um variants of this 4051 chip i'm gonna search for something um let's see Maybe there is a way of searching for the series 4051. Let's see. To use the TS up. I'll probably go with this one. Just to make sure that this is the correct chip. Yeah, this one is a bit better in terms of uh, the own resistance. And this one is in sub 16. Oh, there we go. I can click on this link. SO16. I'm gonna go with the SO16.
or actually it's probably better to go with this one uh, because this one is the most widely available series. series. So this one is in uh, SSOP, I think. Um, TSSOP. Uh, TSSOP 16. I'm gonna use this one. Let's see what it says in the data sheet here. Um, while it's loading, I can go back to the uh, to my library here, and uh, I'll add this chip to my library. Uh, paste symbol. I see. Yes, so this five millimeters times six thirty. <coughs> TS sub uh, sixteen. Um, Really? Five millimeters times. Okay. Maybe this is wrong. Let's see. There should be a diagram with exact measurements. They could be measuring with the pins or without the pins. So I just want to. Uh, okay. So TSOP. Um, and the pitch is here 65 uh, and uh, it's 450 uh, times 5 yeah it's like 440 yeah it's 440 uh, on average times 5 it's this one okay um, so going back to the schematic, I'll place the I'll place it actually here. And by the way, I'm going to change this amplifier to a different variant because uh, this amplifier, even though it has a rail-to-rail -rail output, uh, it doesn't have a rail-to-rail -rail input. So I've been uh, researching this a little bit more, and this amplifier has a uh, VCC minus two volts input, which I actually saw when I was reading the data sheet. But I just um, I decided to use it anyway, and I realized it was a mistake. Uh, so I need to change this amplifier to another one. Uh, but for now, I will uh, just add the multiplexer. Um, let's see. 4051. Um, oh, this is ridiculous. <coughs> the pins are huge. This is the default footprints. Wait. This was even the wrong chip. Forty fifty one. This is the one I want. So now I can edit it. The default keycap footprints, they have pins that are so huge. I'm going to change this to 2.54. Okay. 2.54. I could probably edit this using a text editor, but I think for a chip like this, it's it's just faster to change each pin manually. Let's 
Seven. Why, why are they all passive? Okay, maybe it makes sense to have them passive. They're actually, they're actually idle, but um, they're never driven, so that way they can be considered passive. So an IO pin is a pin that is either operating in push-pull or an open drain or in any other way is actually controlled by the chip. In this case these pins are not controlled by the chips, so they're passive. Uh, and uh, ground and power input uh, yeah, this one as well. Like that. And then possibly move this up here. Okay. Cool. Much better. Uh, I want to do a little rearrangement here, so I'm going to move this power supply um, I'm going to move this power supply possibly there for now. And then I will um, I don't want to, to use labels uh, for things. Oh, actually, no. I don't want to use labels for um, for stuff that goes directly to a different chip that is uh, right close by. I'm gonna move this out and. Uh, And the multiplexer can go right here. Okay.
right. I think inhibition will probably go to DSS or something. I'll read the data sheet for this. And then this would be the pot. And we can move the pot mode and connect it to one of the channels here. So the way that this is probably going to be set up in the firmware is that the um, the ADC is going to be programmed to, to, to read all of the uh, channels in, in some predefined uh, sequence. And um, every time the sequence completes, the address of the potentiometer to be read is going to be updated. it's going to be kind of like a um, they're going to be read out over multiple cycles so these two are for the for the op amps and we need another one for this chip Okay, what I want to do now is update the, the op amp here. Uh, the op amp that I'm going to use uh, is called, I made a note here, let's see. So um, I'm going to use the TLV2401, or in this case it's going to be 2474, uh, which is uh, a 4 op amp chip. Uh, and clipping guides, um, I'm not really sure if. Uh, I think I think I'm gonna add uh, some clipping guides to the input. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna add them here because um, essentially we want to just uh, suppress any um, high voltage input uh, on on these connectors. And uh, these ones will never go uh, beyond uh, um, the supply voltage. So um, in this case, it's gonna be divided by. Um, it's going to be brought down a little bit, so this this will end up being around 3.3 .3 volts. Um, and um, on the input, I'm going to add some uh, suppression guides, uh, or rather clipping guides. So TLV2474, uh, it has a slightly different pinout. Um, so I'll have to create a new symbol for it. Uh, well, I'll have to create a new symbol for it anyway. Let's see, TLV. Yeah. <laughs> 
<coughs> Precision uh, quad or pump, um, rail to rail input and output. Gain bandwidth product uh, 2.8 megahertz. So the, the way uh, to understand gain bandwidth product is that um, the, so consider that the, the op-amp has a certain uh, slew rate. Uh, so the op-amp um, can respond to, to signal changes with a certain speed in, expressed in uh, voltage uh, in volts per, um, let's say voltage per second. Usually it's like voltage per microsecond. Uh, but that's that's the rate with which the op amp uh, can respond the fastest. So uh, if you have a gain that is uh, higher, uh, so that the output voltage has to swing more for smaller changes in the input voltage, uh, then um, uh, the frequency uh, that you can uh, amplify effectively without distortion is going to be lower. Uh, and if the gain is one, then uh, the frequency will be 2.8 megahertz. Um, so um, the more gain that we uh, set on the amplifier, uh, the the lower bandwidth we can have. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to use that one. There is a little more information here. Okay, it can be sent in, in 10 days. Whereas uh, for the first chip, uh, they can be sent right away. I'm gonna choose this one for now. data sheet and make sure that we get the right pin out. And then we have unit one, two, three, four. Uh, so CMOS rail to rail output supply voltage from 2.76 volts. Um, and uh, it doesn't mention 74. 74 is TS sub 14. Um, so volt per microsecond. Rail to rail output on 77 and rail to rail input and output on uh, 2470X, uh, which is highly desirable in this case. We are reading potentiometers usually, or we are reading an analog signal that comes in with um, that has a um, that has an input of 0 to 5 volts, and uh, we want to read it uh, up to the supply voltage. DN or PWP. Um, did it say somewhere?
I suppose that's the letter after the after the name, so it's C D R. Um, D R O. Okay. This is exceptionally slow. Okay, if I search for that, I'm gonna get uh, uh, matches on every single page because of the header. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I want to just make sure that I have the right package. Because sometimes the pictures lie. Uh, the pictures on Mauser can be for one package, whereas the chip that is actually referenced by the manufacturer number has a different package. So I have to find some description of the manufacturer number, um, of the parts of the manufacturer number. Uh, and they will usually. Um, so, I mean, it says here, so it's like uh, C. Uh, so there are letters, but I'm not sure really which uh, which letter from the manufacturer number this is. Let's see. This table should be um, sufficient. So I'm going to search for CDR. So I see uh, 14. Okay, cool. Great, um, and the package drawing is D. Yeah, twenty-four seventy-four. I'm gonna update the pin out here. Uh, so I see fourteen, um, and. Um, Number one is out, uh, one out, two input negative, uh, three input positive. Uh, so far so good, but the power is on um, four and eleven. Four and eleven. Okay. Maybe it's so good that um, these units are exactly the same as uh, on the other op amp. So it's um, five positive. Six negative, and uh, out is on seven. Good. C, ten nine eight. <coughs> ten nine eight. Okay. Twelve thirteen fourteen. Okay. So uh, this is exactly the same package, and actually uh, this doesn't have the, the shutdown, so um, this is... Um, I was looking at a, at a different um, uh, product code, and uh, it had this package, so it had the, the shutdown pins. Uh, but uh, it's nice that I can just reuse the same symbol. Uh, I just changed the product code, and... Um, I'll just update this symbol here. Uh, let's see. Really? So what if I go and update the values? So update field values. Is it gonna update the fields? Yes. Cool. Okay. So updating the op amp. It's rather nice that op amps come in um, standard packages. 
I think I updated that one. Didn't I? Yeah. So um, I could even use a different op amp uh, if I find it necessary, and then just solder it on the same footprint. Okay. I think this is all of them. I'll update the fields and double check this one. Okay. Oh, that one got updated. Come on. Update field values. Yeah. Sometimes KiCad has this peculiar way of functioning. Okay, so the, the inputs here can be either a potentiometer or an analog signal between ground and 5 volts, which is now going to be uh, converted to uh, the output here that goes to the ADC. And the reason for using op amps here is that if I uh, if I connect a potentiometer directly to uh, uh, to a circuit like this, uh, then I have to have uh, high resistances in order for the potentiometer not to be uh, messed up by the uh, by the input impedance of this circuit. Uh, and if I have high resistances, then uh, my ADC uh, precision suffers. Um, so um, I want to have an op amp here, and I also want to um, be able to set the gain, so I'm gonna maybe uh, I'm gonna check the, the circuit here um, and see what they have as uh, typical applications. <coughs> Application information. Is there a gain um, calculation somewhere? It's it's pretty generic. I just I I don't work with op amps um, every day, so I'm a little bit new to this. Um, I um, I learn a lot um, about op amps, but I'm still not at the point where I could say that I'm an op amp expert. Uh, so um, I have to sometimes double check uh, data sheets and uh, maybe even search for um, so I would need to connect a resistor there uh, between uh, along the negative path and then to ground. Let's see. Non inverting up amp. And the gain is calculated. Voltage gain of the circuit can be taken as 1 plus uh, R2 divided by R1. Okay. So there will be a way to both bypass this circuit just by soldering the resistor there or uh, to set the gain um, of this op amp. By solving two resistors like this. Let's see. Maybe I could just do it like this. easily copy them like this. So I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to place this one like somewhere where it makes sense. And that's too close. Come on. Yay! 
got it right. Okay. So um, I'm going to duplicate this circuit and place it onto all the inputs. So in GCAD, putting a, a little comment mark um, before the designator name um, actually makes this component hidden from the bomb. So it could be nice to have variable gain um, amplifier inputs. Uh, so this is this is mostly for evaluation and to have the ability to use the same PCB in order to um, uh, use it in different applications. So duplicate block and then this will go here. And once again, this one go here. And then there are two more. Okay. Keep block. And actually, um, the resistor on the path here, let's see, actually this resistor has to be soldered, so uh, this will have to be uncommented. That was a bit unfortunate, if I didn't notice that. Um, okay. No, come on. So, um, the only thing that's left here now is the input protection, which I actually think that they already have inside the op -amp, um, inside this particular op -amp. Okay, um, so where is this data sheet? Um, input. It seems that inputs don't have any protection diodes. Uh, so what about ESD? Is there any ESD protection? This integrated circuit can be damaged by ESD. Um, no ESD protection. Okay. Which kind of makes sense because uh, adding diodes to the signal path, um, adding any clamping diodes actually uh, affects the signal. Uh, although it's not going to be, um, uh, it's not going to be a very pronounced effect unless uh, the signal is very small or the temperatures get really high. Uh, but it still distorts the signal. So that's good to know. Let's place the bat fifty four. So 
this will go to five volts and uh, this one will go to five volts. And then this one will go to the input. Which is also good if um, if the bypass resistors are used and this goes directly to the microcontroller or uh, 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 rather it's it, it goes to the to the multiplexer but anyway um, after the multiplexer it goes to the mic microcontroller um, and I put this uh, connection after the 10k resistor so any current that flows through this connection and then flows to the su power supply here uh, it's going to be very small current so it's not going to increase the voltage in the power supply um, the regulator will uh, take care of regulating this voltage. I'm not sure how it works though um, when um, uh, when there is a power management IC like this. Whether the, whether if the voltage rises on uh, the output here, does it also rise on the input? Like on the input there, on the BGB five volt. Um, that's something that I would possibly want to double check um, but uh, since the current is very small uh, it doesn't really matter um, because this current is going to be consumed by the um, circuitry that's connected um, to this power rail duplicate block And as with the resistors, this circuit is also optional, so if it distorts the signal too much, I just don't mount them. Um, duplicate block. And duplicate block. I'm probably going to have to start using the subsheets functionality. I'll do that eventually. I feel that so far it's still more uh, pleasant to work with a single sheet. This looks kind of complex. Oh, done to delete this text. And uh, adding all pumps to um, to the voltage sensing um, signals is probably something I would do as well because my resistors are very large there Move this one and then just delete this Okay. 
better. Do we want to bypass this? Um, yeah. Um, we already can bypass this, so let's delete that one. Uh, and then. So I got the analog inputs fixed. And now I think. Um, yeah, I'm going to delete these ones as well. So VREF2. We can delete this because I have them connected uh, to the reference power supply here. This VREF1 and VREF2. Okay. The SWO pin is unusable because uh, it would require the use of one of the pins here, which I'm using for something else. I think I'm using it. Um, actually, maybe there is another alternative for the SWO pin. Could there be another alternative? For It was in the data sheet. It was here. So S W O. Trace S V O is only on P D three. Yeah. P B three. P D three is used for something else. It's used for the encoder. Because Pinot 2 channel 2 is connected there. Is there another alternative for channel 2? Uh, 2 to channel 2. PA1 and PB3. That's the only two places where channel 2 connects. On all of the chips. So that's kind of... That's very unfortunate. Yeah, so... Um, this debugging function will have to go. always a trade-off. Always a trade-off between something. So, um, so far it actually seems that this might work. Um, I got the most important signals all connected, I think. Let's see, I'm going to move it like this. Press G and then move it like this. Obviously, all of this is going to have to be reviewed once again, once I'm done. Um, but um, I think this is um, this is looking good. Um, both of the um, of the encoder interface chips can connect to the same SPI port, uh, so we could use um, SPI two maybe. SPI one. Come on. PA seven <coughs> or PB five. PA seven or PB five. Only two places. PB five is taken. PA7 is probably taken as well. Yes. 
so we cannot use SPI 1. Let's see SPI 2. PV 10. PV 10 is available. There is also the, the USB pins. They, they can only go to certain pins. Like, um, yeah, and the can. It could very well be that this is not going to work. But it's exciting. Would I have to change this package to a 100, 176 pin package? Or can I leave it as is? So, um, encoder clock, um, and also, uh, yeah, let's, let's just, uh, let's just keep it like this. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be two connections, so they can go, they can play a little bit outside there. Um, SPI to Mossy. B15 <coughs> and P5 P is not available and PC3 PB15 unavailable and PC3 unavailable god damn it What is PC3? Oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah, SPI2 must be God damn it. Okay, so what about SPI3 then? PC12 and uh, PD6. It looks like SPI3 is the interface that I would have to use. And, um, and I would actually have to use it for um, all of the things that are connected to SPI. Because I don't think there is an SPI4. SPI four. Let's see. There is no SPI four. Four. Yes, there is an SPI four. Interesting. PE six and PE fourteen. Okay, cool. So we have a little bit of. Um, room for wiggling. <laughs> we have a little room for uh, for alternatives. Um, so um, I'll connect this first to SPI3 and uh, then maybe use SPI4 as expansion or something. Uh, so Mossy will go here. And uh, Miso I'll go here. And uh, chip select can go pretty much anywhere. Oh, look, another ADC channel. That's pretty nice. Uh, PC9 can be useful. I think um, I can leave this for now. OK. 
Okay. Um, Going to do like this. So it's clock, and it will go to both of them. It's very nice uh, to label things this way so that they actually get connected together uh, at the MCU. Um, and this makes uh, the connections very clear. So instead of uh, calling this something like um, SPI 1 or 2 and then have to change that when changing the SPI port, I just call them. Uh, by the signal names to which they connect, and then I connect multiple signals together like this. Um, and lossy is gonna go here. And they will connect right here. Okay, uh, the chip selects are not critical, they can go to any GPIO. Um, so, um, there is quite a few control signals for the, yeah, there's also a label gate. Uh, there's quite a few control signals here that all go to um, either the encoder interface or the gate driver. I think enable gate, I will probably connect that to... Um, um, so uh, enable gate uh, over current um, and uh, any uh, like fault uh, outputs from this chip, uh, they have to be connected directly to the, to the CPU. So they'll go to some GPI pin. Uh, but then um, things like um, control signals for this um, uh, encoder interface, they can go to a uh, GPIO expander because they're not, they're, they're pretty much like set once and then they, they're never changed until the application is power cycled. Uh, so, um, So putting them on some uh, I2C GPIO expander could be an option. <coughs> I2C or SPI. Okay, so uh, CANFD is going to go to uh, to the to the other SPI port. Let's see, uh, we have CAN FD. Um, and let's move this a little bit. Yeah. Was it PE? You got to be fucking kidding me. SPI 5, please be available. Oh, there's also SPI 6. Okay, great. So I'll go with SPI 6 here. So 
the count of D is going to go to SPI 6, um, and then we can it to the clock there, and the mossy uh, there, and the miso in there. Putting this on a separate SPI interface is a good idea, so that it doesn't have to wait uh, for any other device. But SPI 4, is SPI 4 available? Yes, it's actually available here. That's good. So these pins are taken, but it's available there, which is nice. Okay. And we've got the bot button input. Um, I was thinking at first to use a GPIO expander for them. But now that I'm thinking about it a little bit more, I may use the same um, analog uh, multiplexer to actually just multiplex the buttons. But I'll see. Uh, I'll see what pins are left after all of these are connected. Okay, so that's it. That's it for this video. Uh, more to come. Um, in the next video, I'll probably continue working on the pins um, and connecting any remaining peripherals.